Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kiran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. And we'll start off with the daily numbers. There was 9,122 new COVID-19 cases and 71 more fatalities recorded during the previous 24 hours, the Public Health Ministry reported on Tuesday morning. There were 9,006 cases in general population and 116 among prison inmates. The number of new cases dropped from 10,111 announced on Monday when the country recorded 63 more deaths. On Monday, 10,731 COVID-19 patients were discharged from hospital after recovering from the coronavirus. There was also 1,924 ATK probable cases in the country. So as you can see, the numbers now have dipped below 10,000, which is a good sign. And hopefully this will continue over the next couple of weeks. And our first story of the day, 130 million Thai baht stolen from over 10,000 Thai bank accounts in just four days. About 130 million baht has been mysteriously withdrawn from 10,700 bank accounts through credit and debit card payments between October 14th and 17th, according to the president of the Thai Bankers Association, TBA, Peyang Shivanish. The mysterious withdrawals, mostly payments for goods or services with stores registered in foreign countries, have become the subject of an intense investigation by the bank of Thailand, the TBA, the police and the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society. Mr. Peyong said that the cyber criminals used information from the credit or debit cards to place multiple orders in small amounts, which do not require the use of a one-time password OTP to complete, adding that banks will refund the affected customers within five days if it can be proved that they did not order any goods or services online during this period. As for credit cards, he said the banks will cancel all the dubious transactions and the customers will not be required to repay their banks for for the transactions in questions. Assistant Governor for Payment System Policy and Financial Technology of the Bank of Thailand said the central bank will increase the monitoring of unusual transactions to cover those of small amounts but with unusually high frequency, adding that the cards will be immediately suspended and customers concerned notified if its unusual activity is detected. She disclosed that the bank and the TBA have worked out a set of additional measures to prevent this form of cybercrime. The measures include banks will step up monitoring of frequent, low-value transactions and, if something unusual is found, the credit or debit card concerned will be cancelled immediately and their owners notified. Customers will be notified every time they undertake a transaction via SMS, email or mobile banking system. Debit card customers will be refunded within five days after it is discovered that their accounts have been breached. For credit card holders, the unusual transactions will be cancelled. The central bank and TBA will consult with credit card service providers such as Visa, Mass MasterCard to require the use of OTPs for transactions with online stores. Meanwhile, the general public are advised to check their transactions regularly, especially those which involve the use of debit cards on high-risk platforms such as online gambling or platforms which do not require an OTP. And up next, diesel may be capped at 30 baht, but not truckers 25 baht, says the minister. The price of diesel could be capped at 30 baht a litre at the pump, but not the 25 baht demanded by truckers, says the Minister for Energy on Tuesday. He was speaking after a meeting with representatives of the Land Transport Federation of Thailand at a government house on Tuesday. The federation wants the government to cut the price of diesel to offset the increasingly high cost of operations as global crude oil prices rise. The present pump price is around 30 baht. The energy minister, also who is the deputy prime minister, said a possible solution was to limit the price of high-speed diesel to 30 baht per litre to the National Energy Policy Council. High-speed diesel is the most commonly used, he said. He also said truck operators wanted a lower price because they did not want to raise transport charges. He accepted their position for consideration and would also brief Prime Minister Priya Chana Shah, he said. Local oil prices are based on global prices. If the price decreases, local oil prices will follow. He attributed the rising price of growing demand in countries facing winter. The price should improve now the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries has announced an increase in production, he said. On Tuesday, members of the Land Transport Federation drove about 1,000 trucks in slow procession along main roads in many provinces, including on Bangkok's outskirts, to emphasize their demand for diesel price control. The Federation wants the government to suspend the inclusion of a contribution to the energy fund in the pump price of diesel for one year and reduce excise duty on oil by 5 baht per litre. Meanwhile,
Meanwhile, oil retailers PTT and Bank Check Corporation announced they reduced the price of high-speed diesel by 0.20 baht per liter to 29.04 baht on Wednesday morning. Yeah, the price of diesel has been kind of skyrocketing over the last couple of months. Now, I remember last year, about this time last year, the price of diesel in Thailand was about 16 to 17 baht per litre. Of course, nobody was complaining back then, but, you know, it's all to do with supply and demand. And yes, at the moment, there is an issue with supply, which is why the price has crept up. I mean, it will come back down in the next couple of months too. But yes, the minister also sees the point of the truck drivers in that they don't want to raise their transportation costs because that in turn could cost them business. So yeah, it's a a kind of a a double-edged sword when you come to think about it. But hopefully they'll sort something out. And it's not just for truckers, but for everyone who drives a, a diesel, you know, automobile here in Thailand. And moving on to the next story, tourism operators downbeat on domestic travel sentiment. Tourism operators anticipate lukewarm travel sentiment as concerns over COVID-19 and weak purchasing power remain key obstacles for for domestic trips despite the subsidy generating an additional 2 million room nights. Domestic tourism reached its peak last November thanks to low infection rates and improving travel mood driven by many marketing campaigns and government stimulus schemes, but this year might not see such a volume again, said Knock Air chief executive. He said different travel requirements in each province also deterred tourists from air travel and choosing nearby areas within driving distance instead, while tourists last year did not have to show any COVID-19 tests before boarding planes. He said the uncertain virus situation and low purchasing power caused by the outbreak also weighed down the number of domestic trips. Knock Air has resumed all 23 domestic routes with 20 to 40 flights per day from 14 to 20 flights last month, while cabin factor in the fourth quarter is projected at more than 75% after airlines can unlock full capacity. Vasan Kitikul, president of the Thai Hotels Association, THA, said public concern over caseloads have slowed hotel bookings under the resumption of the subsidy scheme this month compared to the previous phases. He said the occupancy rate for Cha'am was 10-20% to 20% in September, before gradually picking up to 50-60% to 60% and is now estimated to hover around 60% this month. Cha'am and Pechaburi rely on meetings and seminars which recently relaxed with more participants allowed. However, student field trips cannot operate as on-site schools have not yet resumed. After We Travel Together, a 40% tourism subsidy scheme on hotels and air tickets was launched on October 15. 139,233 rooms were booked from 2,706 hotels as of October 17. Meanwhile, the government already subsidized 515.3 million baht from overall 1.38 billion. The president of the THA's North Northern chapter said the demand from the tourism stimulus could not surge as there was weak purchasing power while subsidy programs are equipped with stringent preventative measures against fraud. However, the situation was better than July-August during which occupancy rate plunged to nearly zero. And the featured story of today, control, capacity and jabs, key to success. The November 1 reopening of the country to fully vaccinated tourists without quarantine next month is being guided by three factors according to a senior public health official. They are the COVID-19 situation, the capacity of the public health system to control the pandemic and treat patients, and the vaccination rate in the 17 provinces set for reopening. Dr. Sumani Wachara-Sin, a health official from the Department of Disease Control, said on Monday at the daily briefing for the CCSA that preparations began for the restart of the tourism industry some time ago in consultation with the business sector. The doctor's update came following Prime Minister Priyan Chan-Achaz vow to reopen the country last week. However, she said that can only happen once COVID-19 infections are under control, the public health system is ready and at least 70% of people living in these different areas that will welcome back tourists have been vaccinated. She said that adjustments would be made if necessary as public health remains the top priority and the contingency plan is being considered by the CCSA Operations Centre. She said the restarting tourism must be gradual and the Phuket Sandbox, the pilot province for testing safe reopening standards and practices has provided a valuable learning experience for the whole industry. The Secretary General of the National Security Council and head of the COVID-19 Operations Centre said public health officials, local authorities and business operators must be ready to comply with the procedures and measures. The COVID-19 Operations Centre will try to get everything covered and make travel convenient and safe. It should be finalised in a day or two, he said. He also declined to say if the state of emergency will be lifted ahead of the November 1 reopening, saying it all depends on the measures necessary to contain infections once tourism resumes. 
So since yesterday's show, there hasn't been very much news, just a lot of government officials saying that the list of countries will be released this week and that they're going to try and have the plan for all of this available for people to understand this week. One person from the Ministry of Public Health said, yes, it has to be done this week because we can't be releasing it a day before it's meant to happen, like what happened with the Phuket Sandbox. So yes, they're acknowledging that it needs to be done a lot more professionally than, let's say, the Phuket Sandbox model. I have noticed today is they're trying to not use the word quarantine on your first day and trying to use words like stay in a place where you can be contacted. And it's a little bit tricky with the wording. But the truth is, and what I've seen in uh, the nation this morning as well, that yes, you're going to have to stay at the SHA plus at least on the first night. And as for the blue zones that we've been talking about and that we've heard so much about, I can now tell you what they are. There's 15 designated provinces that have been designated as pilot areas for tourism and they're called blue zones. So you have Bangkok, Samut Prakan, which by the way only is the airport out there, Sunilabum Airport, Krabi, the whole province, Panya, the whole province, Prachapkiri Khan, which should be Hua Hin, Nongke sub-district, you'll have Pechaburi, which will be Cha'am municipality, then you'll have Chonburi, which will be Patia, Bang Lamung, Nachom Tien sub-district, Bang Sare, then you'll have Ranong, which will be Ko Payam, Chiang Mai, which will be Muang, Mei Rim District, and Mei Teng Doi Tao. Then you'll have Loi, which will be Chiang Khan, Buriam, which will be Muang District, Nong Kai, which will be Muang, Si Chiang Mai, Tabo, and Sang Kom, Udan Tani, Rayong, which will be Ko Samet, and Trat, which as I said yesterday, will be Ko Chang. So they're the different areas. I'll try to put them up on the screen during this section as well so you can see them. It's going to be limited to where you can go and and how you can go to those different areas is completely unknown. How you can go from one to the other because you have to pass through various different provinces to get there. So I'm not quite sure how it's all going to work. It's very, very up in the air. And then there's another kind of thing that's been thrown out there is what about, you know, expats who live in Thailand and long term visa holders and even Thai people. You know, if you go abroad and you want to return back, the entry requirement should be a lot easier for you. If you're a working expat, a lot of us have social security payments, which means we're covered under the government scheme in the event we get sick. So why would we have to purchase expensive insurance to come back into the country? It makes absolutely no sense. And as I said, the list of countries, why there needs to be a list is beyond me because if you're vaccinated and you have the PCR test, surely where you come from doesn't matter. Hopefully this week, maybe today or tomorrow, we'll finally see exactly what the requirements will be to enter under this Thailand Pass quarantine free program and whether or not it will actually attract tourists. Now I don't expect lots of tourists to be rushing in the doors regardless of what they do in November, December. Because I reckon anybody who plans to go on holidays in November and December have already booked their holiday somewhere else. And they're going and skipping Thailand this year. And who'd blame them? People can't be sitting around waiting for a country to reopen. So that's the reality of the situation. I think if things ease back, I think you'll start to see maybe more people building up around February, March and April. Maybe around the Songkran period. Then of course you have low season coming in next year and obviously people don't tend to travel as much in Thailand during the low season, especially the holiday maker. They go to, you know, warmer, drier European destinations and places like that. So yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it and as we update it, we'll try to bring you as accurate reporting as we can. And next up, Singapore expands quarantine-free travel for vaccinated passengers. Singapore on Tuesday began quarantine-free entry for fully vaccinated passengers from eight countries, not including Thailand, as part of a plan to ease restrictions while the business hub gears up to live with the coronavirus. The latest easing expanded a program that began with vaccinated air travel lanes with Germany and Brunei last month and is now open to passengers from the United States, Canada, Britain, Denmark, France, Italy, Spain and the Netherlands. Singapore Airlines said flights from Amsterdam, London, Los Angeles and New York were scheduled to arrive Tuesday under the program. We have seen very strong demand for our vaccinated travel lane flights, the national airlines told AFP. This is across all cabin classes as well as various travel segments including leisure, families and business travel. 
Passengers arriving as part of this scheme, which will include South Korea from November 15th, will not have to quarantine if they have been fully vaccinated and test negative for the virus before they depart and when they arrive. To enable families to travel, Singapore has allowed entry to unvaccinated children aged 12 years and under if they are accompanied by someone flying under the scheme. The city-state initially fought the COVID-19 pandemic by shutting borders, imposing lockdowns of varying intensity and aggressive contact tracing. But with more than 80% of the population fully vaccinated, authorities are now keen to revive the economy. Singapore cannot lock down and be closed off indefinitely, said the Prime Minister earlier this month when he announced a raft of measures under the Live With COVID-19 strategy. The city-state is home to the regional office of thousands of multinational corporations which rely on Singapore's status as a business and aviation hub for their operation. Vaccinated travel is a very significant step forward in re-establishing Singapore's role as one of the Asia-Pacific's leading international hubs for finance, regional headquartering and commercial aviation, said the Asia-Pacific chief economist at IHS Market. He added that the travel lanes, notably with the UK, the US, France and Germany, were particularly important as many international firms run large operations from the city's financial centre. The scheme may also provide a shot in the arm for the pandemic hammered airlines and tourism industries, analysts said. Before the pandemic, tourism accounted for about 5% of Singapore's GDP, said Song Seng Won, a regional economist with CIMB Private Banking. We used to get 1.6 million tourists every month. Our airport used to handle over 1,000 flights a day pre-pandemic. Now it's just over 300 flights a day, he told AFP. Statistics from the Singapore Tourism Board showed international visitor arrival plunging to less than 2.8 million last year from a record 19.1 million in 2019. And our next story, Thailand to end Sinovac use this month. Thailand will stop using the COVID-19 vaccine of China Sinovac when its current stock finishes. Thailand used over 31.5 million Sinovac doses since February, starting with two doses to frontline workers, high-risk groups and residents of Phuket. In July, Thailand started inoculating people with Sinovac as a first dose, followed by AstraZeneca. Thailand was the first country to combine Chinese and Western shots. We expect to have distributed all Sinovac doses this week, said Dr. Opus from the Department of Disease Control Director General, adding the program will switch to combining the AstraZeneca vaccine with Pfizer and BioNTech. Thailand has so far vaccinated 36% of the estimated 72 million people who live in the country and hopes to reach 70% by year end. And finally, almost 100 people charged with violating alcohol ban at Bangkok Mall. 93 people were detained for police questioning and charged on Monday for allegedly selling and or drinking alcohol at a restaurant and bar in Bangkok in violation of the COVID-19 restrictions. Police said the restaurant, located in a shopping mall near the Ratcha Prasong intersection, has been warned before about illegal sales of alcohol. On Monday at about 10pm, the bar was found to be open beyond curfew and to be selling alcoholic drinks illegally to over 30 tables of customers. The police detained all the drinkers as well as the bar manager for questioning and charged them for violating the emergency decree and the Communicable Disease Act. Thailand currently bans the sale of alcohol in bars and entertainment venues in a bid to control the spread of COVID-19. Yeah, I, I, I still don't get this whole kind of war on alcohol and, and all of this. I mean, if you're going to be opening up on November 1 in Bangkok, you need to have the bars open, you need to have clubs open, you need to be able to have a drink in a restaurant if you go out. You know, I'm not saying alcohol is the end all be all in the world, but as part of a holiday, people expect to be able to have these things. They also expect not to be under emergency decree and also to have a curfew at nighttime too. So maybe all these things need to be scratched before you decide to reopen and make it a proper holiday destination. That's just my opinion. What do you guys think about it out there? But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kieran Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.